Your Excellency, Mr. Tran Tuan An, Minister of Industry and Trade of Vietnam, Excellencies, fellow ASEAN ministers, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, allow me to extend my sincere wishes from Brunei Darussalam. Congratulations to His Excellency, Mr. Tran Tuan An, for the excellent organization of the ASEAN Energy Business Forum. We are grateful that this important platform is able to continue to bring together voices from across various sectors. Thank you for the opportunity to deliver this address at this year's event. Unity is important as our region pulls itself through this COVID-19 pandemic. The uncertainty this pandemic has brought is a reminder that energy security and sustainability is key to adapt to changing circumstances. There is a need to accelerate efforts to enhance the resilience of our energy sector, to safeguard the prosperity and welfare of the regional population. According to the Renewable Energy Outlook by the ASEAN Center for Energy and the International Renewable Energy Agency, our region will experience a 50% rise in regional energy demand within a decade. ASEAN has an opportunity to drive a clean energy transition as we work to meet this rising energy demand. Brunei Darussalam too is gearing up for this transition. Exciting shifts in our favour are in motion. A number of agencies have indicated that the levelized cost of electricity of renewables continues to fall significantly globally, especially solar, onshore and offshore wind, and hydropower, to the extent that over 50% of utility scale renewable capacity added in 2019 was cheaper than new coal options. It is important that we keep a close view of technology integration of renewables and alternative energies and improvements in energy storage as the drivers and enablers of the energy transition. Ladies and gentlemen, Brunei Darussalam aims to increase the total share of renewable energy in our power generation mix to support this transition. As a nation, we have taken steps to explore the incorporation and integration of solar energy into our energy mix on a small scale. These are still at the pilot stages and mainly to serve rural energy needs away from the main power grid. At the same time, cost effectiveness will be key to scaling up our renewable capacity. We are hopeful of breakthrough in PV and battery technologies. However, Transition will not come overnight. It is a long-term transformation that also relies on significant investment, market shifts and innovative business models. During the transition, we will need to ensure that no one is left behind. An underlying vein in our ASEAN energy transition is not just sustainability, but also universal access. Brunei Darussalam is committed to ensuring the supply of liquefied natural gas as the cleanest fossil fuel option to power growth in ASEAN. It remains an affordable, reliable energy source that acts as a greener, cleaner backbone while renewable energy supply in the region catches up with energy demand. The ASEAN region's demand for fossil fuels as an important source of energy will grow as the regional economy recovers. Brunei Darussalam has a long history as a reliable producer with a strong value chain. We will continue to support the present and future needs of the ASEAN community. Our commitment towards a cleaner and more efficient energy future was also renewed when we launched the Brunei National Climate Change Policy in July of 2020. The debut of this document 
is a testament to our national efforts in upholding the Paris Agreement to lower carbon emissions, in particular emissions from the energy sector. In the light of this, one of the priorities in our climate change policy is decarbonisation from our oil and gas production and its derivatives, power generation, transmission and distribution to end use. Innovation and technology will be vital to ensuring that we stay on track. An example is carbon capture, utilisation and storage, which has great potential in reducing Brunei Darussalam's carbon footprint through lowering industrial emissions, especially in the oil and gas sector. Strategic CCUS adoption can contribute to cutting emissions from venting and flaring from this sector to as low as reasonably possible. In addition, more production technologies to drive process efficiency and optimization are becoming increasingly available. At the same time, digitalization and modernization of our power grid has been critical to improving stability and efficiency. Focus continues to be in increasing the efficiency of our gas power plants. Real-time monitoring allows us to optimize operations, reduce wastage and provide better service. For the end use sectors, we also continue to promote efficient energy consumption. The introduction of new greener products and appliances and ways to inculcate consciousness among consumers. This is currently in progress through the preparation of guidelines for household appliances and the application of building codes related to energy efficiency. For the transportation sector, we are currently in the midst of looking at the deployment of electric vehicles in Brunei Darussalam and the development of necessary infrastructure. Ladies and gentlemen, with these initiatives in place, Brunei Darussalam hopes to contribute to regional targets under the ASEAN Plan of Action for Energy Cooperation. ASEAN's achievement of reducing regional energy intensity and increasing installed renewable energy capacity has been commendable and growing at an exciting pace. A clean energy transition for the region will be attainable with a harmonized approach. Brunei Darussalam stands ready to work closely with member states and dialogue partners to further advance the energy transition in ASEAN. Thank you.